right, welcome to the study abroad for English majors meeting. My name is Megan Pankratz and I'm one of the regional advisors in the UCSB EAP office. Joining me today are the undergraduate English advisor. Um, if you're online, would you care to say a quick hello? Hi, my name is Thomas Huff, English undergrad advisor. Thanks for having me. Also joining me today is one of our peer advisors, um, a UK England returnee. Would you like to give a quick intro? Yeah, I'd love to. Hi, everybody. I'm Nina. I'm a fourth year English and Religious Studies major, and I spent the entirety of my junior year abroad as a reciprocal exchange student at King's College London, and it was a blast. So I'm excited to talk to you guys a little bit about that today. So thanks for joining me, and you'll hear from both of them later in the presentation. So the focus of this meeting is to release a specific advice for students studying abroad as an English major. We plan to cover you know, the why you should study abroad as an English major, where you might consider going given your major, um, and how you can figure it all out and what resources you have available to you. Um, and finally, we'll hear from Nina herself to get that student perspective of studying abroad as an English major. So the why you should study abroad, um, well, definitely by taking major classes abroad, you can help ensure that you'll graduate on time or we've even had UCAP students be able to graduate early. Um, we assume you chose your major because it interests you. So why not pursue that interest in another setting that will offer you um, a new unique perspective. You may even find courses that can count for your major that aren't offered here at UCSB. Lastly, you will simply make yourself more marketable by studying abroad. Um, so you're all going to graduate, uh, you know, from UCSB, a great university with a degree in English, but to really help yourself stand out, um, you know, against your peers when you apply for that first job or to graduate school can be that study abroad experience. Um, so uh, some of the pictures here in quotes you can see um, on the left we have Victoria who spent um, an entire year in England. Um, she is uh, she caught a play and is standing outside Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. So a lot of really um, cool interesting cultural landmarks um, you might see when you go abroad. Um, Rebecca enjoying the night view over Auckland, New Zealand um, took uh, major classes for her English major but also in her creative writing class. Um, it was taught by uh, New Zealand's most recent um, poet laureate. So again, really cool, unique opportunities that you know might not be available um, if you stay here at UCSB. Um, Sabrina, who studied for a summer in Korea, um, really um, liked her study abroad experience in that it really exposed her to non-Western, you know, literary works and thinkers. So um, that's just another plus of going abroad as an English major. Nina, why do you think it's important for um, English majors to study abroad? Well, something I didn't even realize before I went abroad is that the way that we teach English in the UC system is very specialized to the UC system. I felt very comfortable with, um, and I think a lot of people here will agree, we're very used to writing papers where we provide a close literary analysis and that's the skill that we strengthen. But that's actually quite specific to the UC and different countries and different educational systems will approach the study of literature quite differently. I know in the UK, I became so, so comfortable using secondary sources because the rule of thumb there is, you know, every hundred words, reference. And I feel that really well equipped me for a path where I'm now thinking about academia as a graduate school option. So definitely widen my perspectives a little bit about the different ways that literature can be taught and to kind of supplement what Sabrina kind of mentioned in this slide, right? That you, we focus on a lot of very specific narratives here at UCSB. Uh, even in our electives, a lot of those are contemporary voices, but they're American voices. And some of the material and academic course offerings that were available to me abroad were very, very different and electives that don't have replicas here at UCSB. And I think that that will be true across host universities and programs. And did you make it to the Globe Theater yourself? I did. I saw a Midsummer Night's Dream and they did an extremely modern take on it. It was super colorful. The, the cast was all POC. It was a total blast and they do five pound standing tickets. So your back is killing you because you're standing for three and a half hours. It's a long show, but it's just like a colorful, crazy affair with like carriages coming through where you're standing. So cool. Awesome, thanks for sharing. So now let's talk about where you should go. So you do have a lot of choices. UCAP offers over 150 programs. 
um, in 40 countries across six continents. Um, to search for program possibilities in the field of English, um, you should visit the UCEAP website and use their um, Find a Program Search tool. Um, it's uh, circled here on the slide. Without narrowing your search, you will see those 150 program options, but by, uh, you know, further, um, furthering your uh, criteria in your search, um, by first selecting discipline and then subject area, um, your program search can be narrowed down to the programs that do offer um, offerings for English majors. Um, do note you do have to select discipline before the subject area appear. Um, you'll notice here that there are over 40 program options for English majors to study English abroad. Um, and you'll also notice that they aren't all in the UK or even countries where English is the national language. So, you know, don't uh, we do encourage you to think outside the box and don't think that you can only go to, say, England, Ireland, or Scotland as an English major. You can even further narrow down your search by selecting the language of instruction um, and or your desired term. So we encourage you to play around with this tool and search um, and explore for your program possibilities. Now we can take a look at some additional resources um, that we have for you. So this um, snippet is from our UCSB EAP website, which is different than the UC EAP website. Um, this is where you can find all of the campus specific information. Um, so by visiting the academics tab at the top, you'll find a drop down menu, which will take you to the advising pages um, for all of the majors on campus. So here's a sample from the English major advising page. Um, where you'll find specific advice from your department. Um, also, you will see some um, videos from past EAP participants who studied abroad and were English majors. Um, another excellent source of information about courses that have been taken for major credit by UCSB students is our Gaucho Credit Abroad database. Um, so this can also be found on the UCSB EAP website under academics. This database shows the different types of credit UCSB students have received for UC EAP courses they've taken abroad. When looking at the database for courses taken for the English major credit, um, you'll find over 300 course results. Um, so this can be really helpful if you're wondering what program might offer courses for your major and what specific classes might count towards your major. Just do keep in mind that this is a historic database um, of what has been done in the past. So it doesn't tell you um, what courses will um, be offered when you might be going for sure. It also doesn't mean that these courses have been pre-approved in your um, major. So um, it can just be a good place to look initially, especially if you haven't really narrowed down your country or program just yet. Um, but also note that if you aren't held to only the classes that you'll find in this database. Yet another resource um, is the UC EAP course catalog. So the Goucher Credit Abroad database tells you what UCSB students have taken and what type of credit they received at UCSB for those courses. The UC EAP course catalog contains courses taken by all UC students across the system on UC EAP, so not just gauchos, and provides, provides some different information. Um, it can be found um, on the sidebar of our academic tab on our UCSB EAP website, or also under student resources on the menu of the UC EAP website. So as you can see, um, you'll find over 600 course listed, courses listed um, in English. Um, and you can also, by selecting the hyperlinks, um, get a short course description um, to say, bring to your advisor to ask them the likelihood of maybe this course counting towards the requirement you have or maybe. Um, but just like the Gaucho Credit Abroad database, this database simply reflects what has been done, not necessarily what you can do. Um, so new UCEAP programs are being added every year, um, and there won't be any historical data um, for those just yet. Um, so you might be asking, where can you go uh, to get the most accurate information about the courses that you might take when you go abroad? And for that, we suggest you go to the UCEAP website and go to the program page for the program that interests you. 
So under the Academics tab, you'll find the most accurate course information, including the number of courses um, students typically take and the minimum number of units you'll be required to take while you're abroad. If your program of choice is a host university program, like the one um, seen here, the National University of Singapore, um, under the catalogs and resources section, you'll find links to the actual host university's websites and course catalogs um, or syllabus searches um, where you can look up current course offerings. So just like we're not quite sure what's going to be offered next year at UCSB, your host university might be the same, um, but you can still look what they're offering this year to get a general idea, you know, of what might be offered um, when you will go abroad in the future. So we've covered a lot about the resources you can use to search for UCE key programs that offer courses in the field of English, um, where to find information about um, English courses that students have taken in the past. Um, so now I'd like to talk briefly about how you can get major credit for your UCAP courses. Um, so first off, we want you to know that all of your units taken abroad will automatically transfer over and count towards units um, for graduation. Um, they'll show up in bold and appear on your UCSB transcript. Um, but getting credit towards your major or minor requirements um, before you take abroad is not automatic. So you'll, first you'll have to you know, make sure you're taking the appropriate courses abroad. Um, get approval um, or advice from your major department and then petition for them to count towards those specific UCSB requirements when you get back once your grades appear um, in goal. Um, just one side note, um, I do want to let you know that you don't have to take um, you know, major classes when you go abroad. Um, so as long as you're still staying on track, um, you can choose to you know, fulfill your major requirements at UCSB um, and perhaps just go for a summer or focus on GEs abroad um, or just a program that um, you're interested in but might not be directly related to your major so that is also an option for you. Typically major coursework must be upper division and taken for a letter grade for it to count. Um, we highly recommend communicating with your major advisor before you go and no matter which program you apply to, an academic planning form will be required and you will need to get it signed by your major advisor. So that's a great time to really um, discuss the potential classes you plan to take abroad um, and how they may count towards uh, major requirements. But with that said, what you plan to take and what you actually enroll in um, may be two different things. Um, the course that you thought you um, might take might not be offered for the term you go. Um, you might change your mind or there might be a scheduling conflict. Um, so it's really important to also, you know, to do your planning, pick a program that will work for you and allow you uh, to be adaptable. Um, so that's why we also encourage you to keep in touch with your advisors even while you're abroad, especially as you're finalizing registration um, and especially if you're classes that you're enrolling in um, vary greatly from that initial academic planning form and those initial conversations you've had with your advisors. Um, let's see. So as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, getting official approval for major credit for a course you took abroad must happen after you returned and receive your grades for your UCEAP courses. Um, so every department um, has a different petition process and we'll hear from Thomas in just a bit um, and he can share kind of maybe what your steps are um, for your coursework abroad um, counting towards major requirements. Um, when you go abroad, it's really important for that petition process to keep all of your work. So to keep syllabi, graded assignments, papers, exams, um, so you have um, work shown and you can um, provide that to your advisors, especially if you're needing it for specific course credit. So with all of that said, let's hear directly from your English advisor. Thomas? Thanks, Megan. Um, so just to highlight the really big important thing when you're studying abroad is um, to keeping those uh, syllabi. Those are, that's one of the main things for English. Um, we have a EAP faculty member that's able to look over all the syllabi. Um, that's what it's Professor Mitzia Pascali, if you have that class prepare, she's the one that kind of reviews it all. She really just focuses on that syllabus um, for each individual class, make sure to see if it's equivalent um, for English majors. And typically, by and large, a lot of the upper division English classes uh, that we take abroad will apply towards the major as um, upper division elective credits. Um, 
that's usually where they fill into. Um, so we have two different meetings where one you'll meet with me and I'll free to meet with the AP faculty members. So you can get a little checklist saying, if you take these courses, they will be able to apply. Um, and then you take the course, come back over, you'll bring that still by and you do it to them. That's the official process. And you have the final grade, you'll, she'll sign off on it. And then you can come back over to me and we'll plug it into the system so we can see where everything applies into. So the main thing is, if you're thinking about studying abroad, reach out to me early um, and I can be able to kind of guide you on where to locate this, how to get in contact with the steps. Um, that's the biggest thing is a lot of times students just go study abroad, come back, and you won't, don't know if it's gonna, of course it's gonna apply or not. The best thing is to get that pre-approval. Um, and that's the best thing to do so that you can see, safely say, yes, a lot of your courses will apply. Um, usually, the English ones will all apply. There's times when there's other um, courses that are outside of English that will apply just because they're not the typical, they have an English major at that um, college when you're abroad. So there are very many cases where other um, kind of departments apply towards English majors. So don't be, you know, look at the class and don't always think that it's not gonna be able to apply. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so how can students um, contact you this quarter, make appointments, or should they, do you prefer email? Um, yeah, so right now, because everything's all remote, email is the best way you can contact with me. Um, I don't have a phone, work phone right now to be able to contact, so um, email, I'm always, I'm very responsive, I like email, so I can always set up, um, you answer your question via email, and if you, need, if you have like little, any further questions, um, I can set up an, an individual one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting so you can kind of get guidance and I can take my time and explain everything so you can understand what's a, what's going to happen for any of the AAP courses. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Next, let's hear from Nina um, and she'll share her experience studying abroad in England as an English major. Nina? Yeah, I'm super excited. I'm also super excited. The turnout is amazing. Like, thanks to Thomas, I want to say he circulated this. I saw the email about this meeting like three times. I was like, wow, like Thomas is on it. He's making sure people know. And I can also vouch for the fact I just went through my petition process with Thomas. He's very responsive to email. So you should feel in very safe hands uh, about like feeling comfortable taking classes in the major possibly when you go abroad. But from my perspective, I, like I mentioned, I studied abroad for the year, my junior year in the UK pre-pandemic when my program was suspended and I came home. Um, and it's so fun, like looking back at all these pictures. Uh, but for me, sorry, I do have a few notes. I'm like, I want to stay on topic about everything I, I wanted to mention. So I took classes in both my majors abroad. I took classes in King's College London's English department and I also took them in the theology department in hopes of applying the classes to both my majors. I was able to successfully petition, like Thomas mentioned, most of my classes toward upper division English electives and I was also able to successfully petition a class to substitute English 101. But like Megan mentioned, the classes that I took and listed on my academic planning form before I went abroad they did not match what I ended up taking because the course offerings are, it's just like UCSB, right? You don't know what's gonna be offered for their fall semester, for their spring semester, until you actually go. And for me specifically at my host institution, it, it wasn't like UCSB where you can just register for a class. It was quite different. I had to number classes one through eight and one through 12 of what I want, wanted the most. And they would assign me classes based on what was available and what was, uh, able to be taken together scheduling wise so I had no idea what my schedule was going to look like I had no idea what classes I was going to take until they emailed me like some weeks before my departure like here's what you're enrolled in um, like I also mentioned earlier at least in the UK the style of studying English was quite different uh, like I mentioned, lots of secondary sources, which I don't think a lot of us are as comfortable working with in a UC capacity. Something else that was different, uh, maybe someone can vouch for me at the end of this meeting and tell me whether you think that's true. But I find that English curriculum, at least in the United States, is quite focused on, well, 
I, I, I see this. So this is true because this. And I had to move away from that in British writing because they don't like that. They like the uncertainty. They, they, they say, who are you to claim that this is true? So I got into the habit of writing, well, this could be true, but the inverse could also be true, which was really uncomfortable for me at first. So it was definitely a learning curve. Um, in terms of academics, something else that was also quite different is that they don't use traditional syllabuses as much, at least not in the UK. It was much less a format of, well, here's all the books we're gonna be reading this quarter. There would be a few primary texts that we would all read. And then beyond that, it was a huge reading list. And they'd say, go, be free, read whatever you want off the reading list, write about whatever you want. And I, for most of my classes, I had one hour of instruction time a week. One, maybe two, that was it. And it was very, very broad. It, it was highly, highly independent coursework. I personally really enjoyed that. Uh, for most of my classes abroad, my grade was comprised of 100% one final paper. You know, you don't do well on that paper, you, you don't do well on the class, it was just as simple as that. I liked that, it made me feel like I had kind of this magnum opus to, to work toward at the end of the semester, but I do know plenty of people who don't enjoy that kind of split up curriculum that feel very stressed out that your grade is one or two assignments. So at least in the UK system, that's something to be mindful of. But I think that's it for, for academic differences. Um, and as far as my future plans go, I think that studying abroad affected them so much more than I thought. I had really come into UCSB with the perspective um, that I would go to graduate school right after graduating. Specifically, I was like, I'm going to go to law school. I grew up in a pretty affluent pocket of the Bay Area. And witnessing a different kind of lifestyle completely altered that path, that future path for me. It was really motivating to see students who weren't thinking so much about what their plans were five years from now or thinking so much about making six figures three years from now. They were so invested, so many of them, in exactly what they were doing at the moment and they were so interested in it. And that really, that along with the very independent style, like I mentioned of academics there, really opened my eyes to the possibility that I might want to explore academics in the future, that I would be interested in pursuing academia, which when I was at UCSB and I felt a little bit more restricted, at least in what the course offerings were and what we were reading, I didn't feel that way. I really, really enjoyed having the freedom to kind of read what I wanted off this huge list and write about whatever my heart desired as well, as long as it stayed kind of in the same area as what we were studying. So I'm currently putting grad school to the side for a second, thinking about my options, figuring out ways to maybe go back. I just love being there so much, so I might pursue graduate school abroad. Um, I'm not sure. We will see, but on that note, I would absolutely recommend anybody who's on the fence about studying abroad, not only to consider studying abroad, but to consider studying abroad for the full year. I was not someone who was going to study abroad for the full year, and someone in the UCSB EAP office actually highly like pushed it on me. And I decided to be the best choice I've made, bar none. I mean, First of all, I think it gives you a lot more time to really assimilate to where you're living and feel like a resident there. I felt very kind of enmeshed in British culture by the time I left, even though I was only there for probably a total of seven months. Not only that, but I think that it's really valuable to think about the fact that unless you decide to pursue graduate school abroad, you're probably never going to live in another country for as long with as flexible of a schedule. Like I mentioned, I had the most amazing academic experience and it really opened my eyes to wanting to maybe pursue academia in the future, but it was such a flexible schedule, like I also mentioned, that I was only in class for a few hours for my classes and I got to structure everything else exactly the way I wanted it. So I got to really grind during the week and I took so many trips. I experienced so much, not just where I was living, but in the whole region of where I was living. I had never been out of the country before I left and now I've been to 10, 10, 11 countries. I just like shoved them all in and 
you're even if you decide to go live abroad at a later point for graduate school or you get a job you're never going to have the same freedom and flexibility as you will and you're never going to be able to do it as kind of i don't know how i want to describe it kind of accident proof as ucap is I mean, they really provide everything. I had a UC study center in London, even though I was at a host university, that had a 24-hour phone number I could call, that had an office I could go into. The health insurance was so comprehensive. I got to go to therapy every week and have it reimbursed, which was so helpful when I was in a new environment and completely overwhelmed. They organized UCEAP trips with our program fees. So me and my new UCEAP friends, like that's what that picture on the right is. We were having high tea at the Ritz and it was included in my program fees and they were able to kind of package us together so we could do it. Otherwise, I never would have paid like 80 pounds to go have high tea at the Ritz. It's an expensive experience. But yeah, my takeaway is if you're considering studying abroad in the English major, I think it's super valuable to gain a new insight into what studying English can be. And if you can do it for longer, I highly recommend doing it for longer. Also, like Megan has mentioned, she works in the UCSB EAP office as a regional advisor. I'm there as a peer advisor. We have other peer advisors and we're there every day, Monday through Friday from 9.30 to 4 p.m. Or you can drop in via our website and talk to me, talk to another peer advisor. We would really, really love to talk to you. When I say we would really love to talk to you, I'm not exaggerating how much we would be really excited to talk to you. Like I'm, every time a student comes in to our virtual advising office hours, I'm like buzzing. I'm like, yes, hi. So come say hi to me if you are so inclined. I would love it. Thank you, Nina. And yeah, some points that Nina brought up, um, you know, when you go abroad, your host universities will likely have, you know, a different academic culture, a different um, educational system that you get used to, um, you know, or, or it take, it's an adjustment for sure. Um, that's definitely one of the pros in staying longer. If you stay for the year, you have that first semester to really um, get comfortable with it and then um, get familiar and know what you're doing for that second semester. Um, also, as Nina um, pointed out in her experience, a lot of our um, students' experiences are the same and course registration is completely different. It's not necessarily just a matter of logging on to an online system and registering for classes. Oftentimes it's much, much different and sometimes um, much less convenient. So again, you know, it's all part of the adventures um, abroad. Um, Nina's experience in her exams, that's um, typical of uh, the European educational system. So sometimes your grades will, um, you know, be only determined by um, a final exam. And that can sound scary, especially to UC students who want to know, you know where they're at at um, every moment of the term. Um, but our students tend to do very well. Um, let's see. And yes, um, one more point that Nina brought up is um, many of the host universities and partners abroad um, may not give you a formal syllab syllabus like you're used to. It could just be that reading list for the term. So these are just some um, kind of intricacies that um, you might face um, while abroad. And although it might sound scary, um, it definitely takes that adaptability um, for sure that you'll um, inevitably learn while abroad. But um, like I said, our students tend to do very well and their support. Um, some of our uh, locations will have a study center like Nina had, or we have a liaison officer in the host university's international office. Um, so not only are there, they there for that academic support, you know, course registration issues, um, but also, you know, that cultural adjustment piece or just to talk, um, but also many plan fun cultural activities or field trips or excursions um, like Nina's high tea. So um, that's just another benefit in studying abroad through UCEAP. And as Nina so um, nicely mentioned, um, I do want to, uh, you know, let you know that we are here for you. Um, this presentation really threw a lot of information at you, a lot of different databases and websites to visit. Um, so we're here to help you navigate um, all of that. So, um, you know, the reality is that UCAP does offer a wide range of programs, different types, different terms, different countries, languages, um, and systems. Um, and these are programs that are for all UC students across all nine UC campuses. Um, and like we've mentioned previously, you know, new programs are added each year. So there's a lot of choice out there and sometimes that can be hard to really narrow down, but that's what we're here for. 
Um, you know, unfortunately, it's not just as simple as, oh, you're an English major, you can go to this university, take these classes, and this is how it will count for your major. So um, we encourage you to reach out to us, visit our Contact Us page on our UCSB EAP website, um, join us via Zoom. Um, we can help you, you know, as you're maybe narrowing down a program or um, country choice, or um, if you can't find, you know, the courses that are offered on your program, we can help you, um, you know, steer you in the right direction. Um, so please do um, contact us. Um, and I forgot to mention, please hold your uh, questions for Nina. We'll have a Q&A at the end. Um, so I just have one more slide to get through and that is just um, some final words of wisdom. Um, so do start planning uh, for study abroad now. You know, take the time to research. Um, that way you'll have the most options open to you and you'll be able to pick the program that best meets your needs. Um, we invite you to attend as many of our virtual informational meetings as you're available for. So we have some country specific um, informational meetings happening throughout October and into November. Um, for any of you double majors out there, we're having even more um, major specific meetings as well. Um, and as mentioned at the top of the presentation, we have our Study Abroad 101 info sessions and cost and scholarship info sessions happening every Friday afternoon. Um, you can find out all of our events on our news and events page on our UCSB EAP website. So definitely visit our calendar there and add them to yours. Um, regional advisors such as myself, we hold weekly drop-in hours as well. So you can make an appointment if you already have a specific country or even a specific program in mind um, to get more um, specific details. And yeah, so uh, again, if you don't plan for it and don't apply, you don't go. So we encourage you to, um, you know, plan and apply now. Um, again, there is no application fee, so um, there's no financial penalty for submitting that UC uh, EAP application. So that does conclude our presentation. I'm going to stop the recording now.